Let's say you decide to go on a health drive. You're going to do an hour of extra exercise every single day over the next year. But even though your fitness app or the treadmill is telling you that you've burnt an extra 500 calories every day, it turns out that your average daily energy expenditure over the year may not be that much more than if you hadn't bothered with the extra exercise at all. The reason for that has to do with the constrained energy expenditure model, something that is definitely worth knowing about if you're keen to avoid chronic disease, including cancer and dementia. One of the reasons exercise is thought to be so good for health is because it is a hormetic stress, a type of stress that induces a beneficial response. Use exercise to stress your cardiovascular system and your body responds by releasing nitric oxide, which improves the health of your arteries. Put stress on your bones and they increase in density. Exercise also increases anti-inflammatory cytokines as well as increasing blood flow to the brain and levels of neurotrophins, which are important for brain health and one reason why physical activity is crucial in the prevention of neurodegenerative diseases like dementia. So exercise stimulates a beneficial response. But a second reason for exercise being so healthy has to do with constrained energy expenditure. This is the idea that your body wants to burn roughly the same amount of calories each day, which would be based approximately on your body mass and body composition, regardless of how much physical activity you are doing. According to the constrained energy model, in response to the extra calories being burnt up if you are more physically active, calorie expenditure on other functions in the human body is reduced. More calories are not necessarily being used up in total because energy is being diverted away from other activities in an attempt to make up the deficit. And it's this diverting of energy away from other activities which is thought to provide another important health benefit. I came across the constrained energy expenditure model in Herman Ponce's book, Burn, and the following graphics are from his article, which is linked in the description. Here is the amount of physical activity you are doing. If you don't do much, your body has plenty of energy to do all its essential tasks, but it also has excess available to do various non-essential activities, examples of why that is not a good thing coming up shortly. As you increase your physical activity, your total daily energy expenditure doesn't just increase in proportion to your activity levels. Rather, energy is diverted away from non-essential activities as the body attempts to keep daily energy expenditure constant. With extreme levels of activity, it may even start to reduce energy expenditure on essential functions. For example, if you are inactive, your immune system has lots of available energy for non-essential activities like inflammation, where it is not needed. And chronic inflammation can lead to chronic diseases like cardiovascular disease, type 2 diabetes, and cancers including bowel cancer and breast cancer, where a lack of physical activity is a major risk factor. Get active and non-essential immune activity is suppressed because your body now only has enough calories available to use where they are really needed. Push it too far with overtraining and you can become run down and more susceptible to infections as energy is diverted away from essential immune function. Your fight or flight response, too much excess energy and that fight or flight response is overactive leading to poor mental health and increased risk of cardiovascular disease. Get active to keep that in check so that your body only has enough energy to activate the fight or flight response when it is really necessary to do so. And reproduction. Extreme levels of activity can lead to loss of menstrual cycles in women and decreased sex drive and fertility in both sexes. On the other hand, with a sedentary lifestyle, unchecked levels of sex hormones may drive the development of reproductive cancers such as breast cancer and prostate cancer. Getting plenty of physical activity each day will keep a healthy balance where what is necessary is accomplished and what is unnecessary is suppressed. For most people, the negative effects of extreme levels of activity are unlikely to be of concern, since the problem in the modern world is almost always a lack of physical activity, leading to detrimental non-essential activities. 
And bear in mind, this all relates to the body's adaptation to your habitual activity levels in the long term, rather than sporadic bursts of increased exercise. So how much exercise do you actually need to suppress those non-essential activities and optimize your health? Well, first, let's reframe this as physical activity rather than exercise. Vigorous physical activity would be something like running, Moderate activity would be a brisk walk or anything similar that gets the heart rate up. And light activity would be casual walking or light housework. In the UK and the US, health authorities recommend doing muscle strengthening activities on at least two days a week, covering all major muscle groups, which sounds like a good recommendation. In addition, they recommend at least 150 minutes of moderate activity a week. That would average out at 20 minutes a day, or only half that amount if it's vigorous. In my opinion, that is nowhere near the amount of physical activity that humans are designed to be doing each day. Compare that to groups like the Hadza and Chimane, populations without the chronic diseases that our populations have and living in a way more like our hunter-gatherer ancestors. With these populations, you're measuring the amount of physical activity per day in hours, not minutes looking at five or more hours of physical activity each day, which can include a lot of light activity, but also includes one to two hours of moderate to vigorous activity. I reckon a lot of physical and mental illness is occurring because we are massively underestimating the amount of physical activity we need to do each day. And problems like back issues and joint pains are so common in part because people are way too sedentary. I think a better physical activity guideline for adults would be the same recommendation that is given for three to four year olds by the NHS, which is at least 180 minutes, three hours a day, doing a variety of physical activities spread throughout the day, including active and outdoor play, the more the better. The 180 minutes should include at least 60 minutes, one hour of moderate to vigorous intensity physical activity. And within that period, on at least two days a week, you can include your muscle strengthening activities. If you have an active job, that's good news. If not, you need to be looking for every single opportunity to be physically active throughout the entire day and making the most of your days off. This is not really about weight loss, which I have covered in a previous video linked in the description. Instead, the calories used up will divert energy away from detrimental non-essential activities and the time used up will divert you away from sitting around staring at screens for too long. You should have plenty of energy to be physically active throughout the entire day. If that's not the case, my next video is going to cover the best way to correct that. Thanks for watching. Do let me know your thoughts in the comments and I'll see you next time.